Are we back? I think we're back. Oh no! Ah! Oh no! Oh no! Uh, uh, oh! It was working! Uh, come on! Uh, come on, camera live! Wow, the chat stayed up! Holy hell, that's pretty cool! Uh, I think we're back, right? Oh, that thing's changing colors in the background. <laughs> Hold on. Apparently... I can't make popcorn when he streams. The, uh... Yeah, there's one fuse... It's kind of dangerous, but... There's a fuse that's... That's for the kitchen, and for out here in the living room, and for in here. Um... And yeah, and then there was that. But we're back, look at that, we're back quick too. Um, what? Okay, hold on, I gotta restore this. And, okay, um, I'm gonna get caught up on the chat. I, I, I assume that I'm live again. I, I don't know if it's the same stream or a new stream, whatever. Um, but I'm gonna finish up the chat here and then um, I, I, I've, it's late, I just it's midnight now. <laughs> I haven't started testing quads yet. So I'm going to jump right in there and blah, blah. Uh, uh, Jonathan King says, you important bro, love what you do, e-famous and talks to us plebs, love the knowledge bonds you share. <laughs> Thanks brother. Uh, Keith Drone said, I heard you tuned T-Pain's auto with your quad. Yeah, I rammed right into it. <laughs> um, but maybe I'll get to meet him now. Mm. Uh, the, the stream was indeed run over by a drift car. Uh, Rusty said mine wasn't as bad as Patrick, but lost three motors and an arm. Uh, and, and Rusty lost three. <laughs> oh, uh, new stream. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, let's do a giveaway. We already did the giveaways. Okay, so we're good. Uh, license. What, uh, what was the, well, uh, farts. <laughs> Where is it? 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 Uh, far, 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 where is that? License, where is your message where you told me what the, the thing was about the, 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 the thing, the, 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 oh wait, no. Does that mean there's a new chat? That means there's a new chat. Uh, sh shit sticks. Is there a new chat? Are you guys here? What's happening? Is anyone here? Is there anyone out there? What if I click on the link? Copy link address. What if I go to the new link? Maybe I have to go to the new link to, to type in the chat. Is that the deal? Oh, God. The computer's lost its mind. Oh, it's freaking out. Oh, wait. There you guys are. Okay, yeah. So it is a new... Oh, boy. I'm going to have to go to my own video on YouTube to type into the chat. Will it even let me? Yeah, well, Okay. All right. Now we got it. <laughs> That's weird. Um... <laughs> Uh, can you rent? Nah, 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 nah. Mr. Shady says, can you recommend any individual ESCs around 40 amp? I have never, other than the, the Slam the Alien that I built on Flyduino stuff, I've never built an individual ESC rig. Um, my guess would be Akon because I, their 30 by 30 ESCs are just like donkey tastic. Uh, but uh, I don't actually know. So anybody in the collective who has intimate knowledge about individual ESCs around 40 amps, make Mr. Shady a recommendation, please. Drone Pilot says, I only just managed to throw a yaw spin with my whoops, uh, now like a five inch and go backwards through gaps because the momentum and the weight is just not there. Yeah, whoops. Flying whoops is a whole different thing. Samuel Rivera says, E-famous AF, see on EFPV. Um, Flying Brian says, did I miss the super chat giveaway? You did, sorry brother. Um, down, 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 we go thing to say don't screen cap that please yep we got you nevin says and hey now we're here okay uh i'm gonna mainly ignore the chat not that i don't love you guys but i need to go seven thousand miles an hour um to get shit packed i will show you guys um i'll just pack my bag uh, i'll do this and then i'll pack my bag because i know you guys um have asked multiple times what's in my bag I know I need to do a video um, but you'll kind of see a little bit of that I figure um, I need to do this anyway so I'm gonna go to this webcam I'm gonna pull this microphone out 
the audio is not going to be as good as normal, but hey, I don't know what to say right now. <laughs> I'm going to go here, and okay, we're going to go here, and spin this guy around, and I'm going to go over here and turn some more lights on. Oh wait, no, I gotta do shit in beta flight first. What am I doing? Totally out of order. Completely yeah, out of order. What's going on here? Okay, we need beta flight here. And that guy looks famous. Woo! Uh okay. Beta flight. Sue, so, that was probably bad on the on the audio side of things. You guys are probably dead now. My condolences. For all the dead. Okay, uh, I'm actually gonna turn this right back around. <laughs> and I'm gonna point it over here like this. Oh my goodness. What is the deal? Okay, so I am just gonna run through these relatively quick. I pulled all the props off. I am going to allow the application helper to. All right, so getting ready for vacation, the main thing that I want to do is spin all the motors up um, to make sure that they are somewhat, come on, uh, somewhat smooth because typically, you know, I'm kind of getting ready for like some cinematic jams, right? So let's go here to beta flight. I thought I had a little... Can I just show... Oh, if I show Betaflight full screen, it doesn't show you the... Uh, the uh, That's what I'll do. It doesn't show you the pointer, so you don't know where I'm clicking. Okay, so we're going to connect and come down to the Motors tab. I understand the risks, and then we need to plug in a charged 6S battery. So... These should be pretty clean, but um, this rig has been crashed a couple times with these motors now. I broke one of these Brother Hobby 2507 motors at the Drift Club, um, uh, the Drift Event Drift Club. What, what's that? Uh, but I did smash it into a fence, a metal fence. So, so you just spin each motor up individually, and usually... If one's really bad, it'll be pretty noticeable. Um, these are all pretty good. Number two sounds the worst though. So what I'm now gonna do is reach over and put a hand on the quad as I spin the uh, as I spin motor two up because I want to feel how many how much vibration is actually getting into the uh, into the frame from that motor. So j just like. As a control, I'm going to spin motor one up, which was nice and smooth. So that's very little vibrations, nice and smooth, now motor two. So it doesn't feel that bad, but the big test is to go up to about 1300. So 12 to 1300, usually it's right at 1300, but it's a little bit lower on this one, it's 12. Um, that's where these rigs have a lot of issues with vibrations. So in the 1300 region, there, there's, I, it's, it's not the smoothest, but it should be fine. Um, that being said, I will replace that bell because this is like a cinematic ish rig. Um, I will replace the bell on motor two. Uh, I don't have one right now though. The only extra one I have is the broken bent one. Um, so yeah, I will order a replacement motor, pop the bell off, and just throw the bell onto the only motor two. The rest of them were uh, felt completely fine. So that's the big thing that I do. Um, but the other thing I do, I, I for the most part, I try to actually plug um, the rigs in after every time I fly, um, and just think about like how, what or when I'm watching the flight footage. A lot of times I'll see something I don't like, and I'll okay, which rig was that? So a um, couple things. If you have multiple rigs, uh, at the when you turn your GoPro on, just point it at yourself and say, hey, this is the Red Glide with the F40 Pro 2s. Because then when you're watching that footage back and you see it wobbling when you don't want it wobbling, 
you can go to the beginning and go, oh, it's a red glide. Grab it, plug it in, jump into beta flight, make some adjustments to the PID tune or the filters or your rates or, or whatever. Um, so I'm trying to think about, 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 trying to think back i flew this on sunday and it was actually it's getting a lot better uh these 55 52 props are just ridiculously heavy um i don't think the motors were getting hot so i'm going to throw some more p gain at it uh specifically on the pitch axis because this has those dead cat arms in the front so that makes it even worse like it, uh, in terms of um the the length of the lever Talk about that another time if you guys are not understanding what I'm saying. So I'm going to go up to 65 on pitch P. I'm already off the sliders, so I don't even care. Uh, I'm also going to go to uh, I'm going to go up by five on the roll P as well. Um, okay, or I'm going to okay. What just happened? Okay, up by five on for, oh. So uh, if you guys get confused in here, you can hit the refresh button. As long as you haven't saved, it'll it'll refresh it thus it being called the refresh button. Uh, so 45 is going up to 50 on the roll P, 60 is going up to 65 on the pitch P. That is a big differential, but again, heavy rig, heavy battery, heavy GoPro, and dead cat arms. All Everything is working against this, and it needs a shitload of extra pitch P gain and D gain to be able to make up for it. Um, and the yaw, so I watched uh, one of uh, Mark Spatz's videos, uh, one of his patron-only videos. Patreon, man, it's where shit's happening over there. Um, he runs really high yaw P gains, uh, and I'm going to start following suit. So I'm going to go up all the way up to 70 on the yaw P gain. And uh, I gains I'll leave alone, D gains... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go up by five on the D gains as well. So D max on roll is gonna go 65 to 70, 80 to 85 D max on pitch. Uh, D min is gonna go from 55 up to 60, and from 40 up to 45. These are big ass numbers, but when you're dealing with um, bigger than five inch rigs, this is typically what they need to really become locked in. Uh, this might be overdoing it, though, in, in fairness. There, there's a chance that this will be too much. Uh, and the feed forward, I'm actually going to leave alone. Uh, my power scale is at 92%, and that felt pretty... felt fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at 92. Uh, the, these motors are a little bit... I bought a higher KV because the scaling works, the motor output limiting works so well. Um, these are 1850 KV, and I'm running them on these 5.5-inch props. So that's, like, a lot. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just scale it down. Uh, actually, I'm going to come down to 90 because at full throttle, this it was it was chaos at full throttle on Sunday with those 55, 52s. Um, D-min, 1550, okay. On the gain in the advance, rather. Uh, I-term relaxes at 8, that's fine. Uh, filter settings, I've got the uh, gyro low passes turned off. That's another thing that, that uh, Mark and Krunk has been doing for a while as well, actually. Um, RPM filtering and the dynamic notch work so well that you can actually bail on all of your gyro low passes if you have a cleanish build. Um, and this is a, a very clean build. Uh, harmonics 3, minimum frequency 100. I kind of want to move that up. I'll leave it here. And then we've got some dynamic notch. I've got a more aggressive dynamic notch filter um, just to be totally sure. Um, I would rather have a little bit more... I would rather have more filtering on this rig that's more for just holding straight lines um, than because it's not going to be really dealing with prop wash or any of the other things that um, benefit from super low uh, latency within the, the filtering. So this rig is good. Motor spin up clean enough. Uh, data flash free, 13.9 megs. I do have... I am going to leave, um, I did a log on here that I wanted to um, send to Crunked, but it looks like I forgot, and now it's too late, so, uh, but that's okay. I'm going to leave, I'm not going to delete the log, it'll still be on there when I get back. Um, I will bug Crunked for some of his tuning, magical tuning knowledge. Uh, Alright, so one down, although, I gotta throw the Hero 7 in it. And I am going to leave the props off because 
when you're traveling, it is just so much nicer to not have props stabbing you or uh, stabbing holes in the upholstery of your car. Uh, again, chat is being ignored, unfortunately, because the chat went down and it's acting weird. And I just need to get this done and get some sleep because I go on vacation tomorrow. But I want to show you guys um, what I do in terms of maintenance. Now, uh, the most important part of maintenance is just using your eyeballs to look at your shit. Um, because if you look at it, a lot of times you'll see missing screws or broken arms. Um, take your arms like this and flex them really hard and you'll catch broken arms really early, or delaminations that are beginning. This feels nice and strong. Um, yeah, mainly just look at it. Just look at your stuff, and, uh, and uh, you may find issues. Broken zip ties, missing zip ties, missing nuts on uh, ESCs was something that I fixed on this the last time. But this one looks good. Uh, battery straps that are starting to tear, stuff like that. One down. Next. I think one of these is broken, too. I think uh, the ESC went on one of these rigs, and I, it's at, I think it's this one, actually. Um, oh, and the last little finishing touch is one of these super cool little 3D printed uh, USB covers that will be coming to Etsy. I just got to take a picture and add it. You know what? I'll bring them with me. And I'll do it in Asheville. Kristen's bringing a whole bunch of work. I might as well too, right? This is this is considered work now. Isn't that weird? It's fucking weird for me. Um, okay, I'm gonna bring a little plastic bat. Wait, no, I got something easier than that. A little little container here. Yeah, that's not big enough. That one is. Look at that. We're bringing the little guys, and I'm going to put them up on the Etsy store. <laughs> uh, okay. Got that little cover in there, and that one's good to go. This one is blown up. Watch this. Ready? No beeps. No beeps. Power. No beeps. Lights. Uh, VTX is on, receiver's on, uh, the flight controller is not. Ooh, that's interesting. Is the receiver really on? No, the receiver's not on, because the receiver's powered from the flight controller. The, uh, the VTX is on, which means this is a rig that I, um, I powered the VTX directly off the flight control or the, uh, ESC pads, which I don't usually do. Um, so yeah, this is an Akon 20x20 ESC. Uh, of the, so I have two rigs on Akon 30x30s, uh, and they've been bulletproof, and now this rig on the 20x20 Akon, it has not been on this ESC for that long, and this thing is, is shot, um, and it blew up after a big, uh, relatively big hit. Uh, so Akon 20x20 ESCs are definitely not as strong as the 30x30s, but... They are quite a bit lighter. It's like an 8 gram weight savings. Uh, and this has been relatively durable. I mean, th this has lasted a while. But... I don't know. I think I'll try one more of these 20 by 20s uh, I've also talked to Max Beamer. Um, and he's had the same experience. Where the Akon 30 by 30s are invincible. And the 20 by 20s are good. But they do fail. So... This one's not coming with us. Next is the fancy one with the uh, Pro, uh, the F40 Pro 4s. Oh, I almost forgot the little, uh, the little plug for this guy. Get in there, you little devil. I wonder what's going on in the chat. You guys like, you guys talking shit or what are you guys up to in there? Um, yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the Pro 4 rig. Plug it in. Let's see if it works. First of all, it works. Yay! Um, let's get the USB plugged in and see how these motors are doing. These motors are getting crashed more and more, and, uh, they're performing really well. They're, they're, they're taking hits better than the Pro 2s, which is 
all that really matters to me. Uh, that's all I really want. If, if they're as good as the uh, F40 Pro 2s in terms of durability, I am cool. Uh, so we're going to go down here to the motors tab. I understand the risks. Give it power. And let's see how they sound. These are going to be noticeably more angry, for the record. Although that's pretty much perfect. Wow, that sounds really good too. Oh. That one's a little rough. Not that bad though, not that bad. Yeah, the left side of this rig took a big slam at some point. Oh wait, no, these are the uh, these are the Pro 2s. I was wrong. Okay. Um, so for... So I'm in a situation with these Pro 2s where they're discontinued. Um, so I have to, I have a bunch of extra bells, uh, maybe like seven or eight at this point. Um, and I'm sort of currently playing this game of like when one of them gets banged up, I, I take all the extras and I put them all on one after one and I pick the cleanest one. <laughs> and then when that one gets smashed, I do the same thing. So, um, I'm not going to do that this time. This is one of the Thrasher and Basher rigs. Uh, thinking back to how it was flying, the only thing I can remember is uh, zero throttle coming down from dives. It wasn't quite as stable as I would like. Oh, look at the feed forwards. I left the feed forwards on the slider on this one. That's interesting. I don't usually do that. Um, let me check this. Let me check thrust uh, linear. You can just type get thrust. All right, so I already have thrust linear up at 20. Uh, I bet you I have the idle down at 5% on this one. Maybe I'll maybe I'll change that. Yeah, so I have the motor idle at 5%. I'm going to bump it up to 5.5%, and we're going to really quick go through uh, how to set your digital idle. Because every time you change uh, your your... What's that one called? What's it called in configuration? Motor idle. Every time you change your motor idle throttle value uh, in configuration, if you're using the dynamic idle here, you have to fix it. Um, so I got to zero it out. Since I changed the, the idle, uh, I have to zero out the dynamic idle value. And then you come down here to the motors tab. This is 4.2 only. This is beta flight 4.2 only. Uh, understand the risks. Give it power. And so I chose 5.5 in configuration for the idle, right? So that the the here on these numbers they start at a thousand. So I'm going to go to 1055, right? 5.5, 5, 1055. So we go up to 1055. You can just use the up arrow. You you hover your mouse over the master, and then you just use the up arrow, and you go to 1055, and then you look at the RPM here. So the RPM is bouncing between 2700 and 2800. So call it, well, no, one of the other ones is going 26 to 27. So let's say 2700. So 2700 is the number. We take the two zeros off the end to change that into 27. And then we multiply 27 by 0.8 to get 80% of it. That's just the formula and, and how you do it. So 27 times 0.8 equals 21.6, call it 22 because it only take, takes whole numbers. So we go into PIDs. 22 is our new dynamic idle value. Um, I've, I've gone through that a couple times, much slower, um, but that's the whole process to figuring out your digital idle value. Or just zero it out, and, it'll, and you won't use the digital idle, which is not the end of the world. Um, I am going to dump these feed forwards down, though, to, to, because I, I don't like it. I don't like the way feed forward looks in footage. It, it looks too robotic and, and notchy, in my opinion. So I'm going to go to 5 on roll, 10 on pitch. Now let's go 10 on roll, 20 on pitch, and yaw, we're going to go up to 60. And I'm also going to increase the yaw P on this rig. Uh, I'm just going to start doing that on all the rigs. Uh, I'm also going to round, now that I'm off the sliders, I, I like to round these numbers off a little bit, just so they're easier for me to remember. So I'm going to do that real quick. And I am going to add some pitch, uh, some authority on the pitch axis with both P and D gain. Uh, so that was 5, this is going to be 5, and I'm going to push this up by 5 as well. 
Uh, all right, 100% uh, scaling, and let's look at our filters. Oh, I'm still on the, I still have the gyros on on this one. So I'm gonna turn off the gyro low pass filters here. And then I'm just gonna back off the D-term filter. I know I'm going through this fast guys, but um, I've explained this uh, in much better detail in the past. Um, and you can rewind this. So you can technically rewind this and watch it a couple times to see if you can figure out what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> Because uh, I'm I'm going through this like full beans right now. Um, okay, so that's good. Uh, a couple little tweaks there. Receiver tab. I, sometimes I'll just like randomly pick a couple things to check and disconnect. Rig number two, good to go, and it's had power this whole time. Duh. And this is the Pro Four F40 Pro Four rig. Uh, let's make sure it still works. It sure does. Get it plugged in. And I forgot the little USB plug. The USB plugs are still new, so I'm still forgetting them pretty constantly. All right. This is also the rig that's on the 15 millimeter standoffs. Um, this quad is being a little weird. It's... Uh, it... It's it's fallen out of the sky twice now. The most recent time it did it, did it in a very weird way. Um, so I am not flying this rig unrecoverable at the moment, um, if I can remember. It's just, I don't know, it's just acting a little weird, uh, but it hasn't done it, it hasn't done it in a way that, like, I can figure out what to maybe check for yet and I've kind of given it the once over and I haven't really seen anything weird about it oh speaking of I didn't give this a little oh god I made a big noise <laughs> alright yeah this is fine and all the screws are there that looks alright top plate and bottom plate look fine this is also a reason to keep your rig somewhat clean. The cleaner your rig is, the easier it is to spot the uh, the issues. In race cars, you paint the uh, you paint the inside of the car and the roll cage white, and then you can see uh, stress fractures when they begin. Now nah, this looks fine. Um, okay, and connect motors tab. Risks, power. Um, let's see. All right, good. Not quite as good, but still good. Beautiful. Really good. Okay, so motor two is the only one that's showing any signs of uh, of uh, of male pattern balding no of uh, of uh, in home abuse <laughs> uh, okay pit tuning uh, mm, scale factor 85% because these are a million kV these are 1950 kV which is so much power <laughs> Uh, I am off the sliders. Uh, let me give it some more feed forward on yaw, and I'm going to give it a bunch more authority on yaw for the P gain. I'm going to move that all the way up to 60, actually. Uh, pitch, I'm going to move up to... No, roll, I'm going to take P down to 40. Uh, D max. No, nah, I'll leave it at 42. I'm going to leave the PIDs on this one alone, because I, I don't remember what this thing was doing at all. Uh, let me check the digital idle on this though. It is at five, so let's redo the, uh, I'm gonna move it to 5.5 and we're gonna redo the um, the digital idle. So you guys will get to see it again. Come on, come on, come on. All right, so you go to PID tuning. Now that we've changed the digital idle to 5.5%, we go to dynamic idle value, we zero it out to turn it off, we save. Now we go to motors, not OSD. Risks, power, 
We remember that 5.5 number, and we know we want to turn these up to 10.55. Arrow up. All right, 10.55. We've got RPMs ranging from 33 to 3,400, as low as... Nope, they're all 33, 3,400. Uh, more of them are sitting on 33, so I'm going to say 3,300. Uh, so 3,300, take off the zeros, is 33. Calculator, 33 times 0.8, because you need 80%. 26.4, call it 27, and that's our digital idle value. Dynamic idle value. What did I say, 27? I can't see the chat, so don't even bother answering me. I'm pretty sure I said 27. <laughs> um... I'm just going to leave the PIDs. Filters, I do have the low passes off on this one. And I am at 1.2 on the D term. That should be fine. Um, I have this, I'm filtering this a little bit more uh, because of this weird falling out of the sky thing. The most recent time it did it, it shut off completely. Um, I, have a, I have a hunch it might be the, um, it might actually be the capacitor. Uh, I've had this issue before where if the posts... So you put your you've got your capacitor and you put your you've got your capacitor and you put your waffle cap on the top if you're uh, I don't know if you have a waffle cap um, and what can happen is if the if this whole thing gets hit really hard it can break the the stem off of the uh, off of the waffle cap um, it's the only thing I can think of that that might have happened so I'm gonna keep my eye on that but I'm just gonna fly it in recoverable spots for for the moment. Um, until it does it one more time and I get a yeah once it's done it three times I can get I'll have a better idea of what where to maybe look um, save this and receiver check that the smoothing is on 20 that looks good okay done and the last thing that we're gonna check is the acrobrat because it's gonna get a little bit of love but first we are going to do a visual on this guy. Man, that is strong. Oh, this arm might be weakening up a little bit. God damn, it is strong on that axis. Jesus. Um, these aren't glide hammer arms, are they? No. Damn, the new FPV cycle arms, the new regular 5mm arms are noticeably stronger. Um, 15 mil standoffs look good. This feels strong front to back. Base plate looks fine. Feels fine. Antennas look okay. And yeah, I pulled the capacitor back a little bit. There's a chance that that'll have fixed the uh, the problem. And looks fine. Last but not least is the Acrobrat which has some great footage on it because these Xnova 1804s are fucking game changers. Game changers, bros. If you have an Acrobrat, go buy Xnova 1804s right now. Um, they're, they're only 3,500 KV, but you will not know it. You will think they're uh, 7,000 KV. Uh, on 4S, they're, they, they really jam. And uh, the, the tune is just incredible because they're so nice and smooth uh, I need a little battery let's grab come on where are all the little batteries friends where are you there's one let me just make sure this isn't super discharged uh, 3.7 per cell that'll be okay for just a second do as I say, not as I do. I should not be using this battery, but uh, this is one of the more pillowy batteries, so fuck it. Um, motors. I understand the risks, and let's see if any of them are getting banged up. So this isn't on foam feet, so it's going to sound a lot. I'm actually going to pick it up off the table. My god, these motors make some fucking power. All right, so that one's getting a little banged up. I did have a little. Oh yeah, you can see it. Yep, uh, it's still uh, it's still totally fine though. That that this motor bell got hit on the concrete, and I can barely tell. 
I'm not going to say I can barely tell. I can definitely tell, but... Um, so these X Nova 1804s use bigger bearings and they use a thir uh, three millimeter motor shaft. And if this motor had taken, if this motor had a two millimeter motor shaft in it and it had taken the hit that this thing took, it would be shot to shit. This is a perfect example of why we need three millimeter motor shafts for rigs that end up being over 200 grams all up weight. Um, this motor is fine and this will continue to, to perform completely okay um, because of things. Because it's got the three millimeter. Okay, uh, I am off the sliders. I still have the feed forward jacked up on this though. Why? 10, 20, and we're going to go 60. And I'm going to take the P on yaw, and I'm going to go up to 50. And the pitch P, I'm going to go to 50 as well. Roll is 40. I'm just rounding these numbers off. Uh, up to 30, 30 and 35, 40 and 50. No. On pitch, I'm going to go up to 38. On D min and D max, I'm going to go up to 60. Because I got a dong the size of a baseball bat. I wish I could see the chat. I miss you guys. Uh, actual rates are in effect. And I didn't turn off the gyro low pass filters on this rig, but I'm gonna. Um, that is a ballsy move for a micro. I'm gonna turn the D-term filtering down a little bit to 1.2. And we're gonna see what happens. That might be a big mistake, but um, it might also be... The greatest thing in the whole wide world. I'm also going to reduce the dynamic notch Q a little bit, just to just to kind of um, give me a little bit more safety. All right, we should be good there. And uh, configuration digital idle it, or the motor idle is at five. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to move it to. Actually, no. The the uh, the micros don't have the issue that the five inch rigs do. Uh, so I'm going to leave that alone. And I do have a black box log in there. Uh, that's fine. And good disconnect. Motors are running smooth. We don't. I'm not going to reset the reset the uh, digital idle. Uh, this battery is good to go. And I think I already gave this thing kind of a once over. The the other like once over activity that I'll do is just take a driver and, and just spot check a couple uh, nuts. That's what she said and uh, make sure that they're still nutty enough. <laughs> and the um, the one thing that I always put a wrench on though is the run cam hybrid. Because the uh, the mounting isn't perfectly centered like, like all the other ones, you know, they, they did offset mounts, uh, it, they, uh, they work themselves loose. So, you always got to just go in there and tighten them a little bit. And I don't want to put a uh, Loctite on them because the plastic around the, uh, I, it's just, it's a long story. Long story for another day. Acrobrat is good. And uh, I'm going to do my Insta360 Go testing. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, you had to see that. Uh, I'm going to do my Insta360 Go versus Runcam Hybrid testing on this. Um, I'm finally remembering to bring the Insta360 Go with me. The last three times I've gone out to fly, including the fucking drift event, uh, I forgot to bring the Insta360 Go. Uh, but it's in my bag, and I'm going to put it on here, and hopefully I don't lose it. That's four quads. That's more than enough. Um, bag stuff, eh? Let's do bag things. Uh, oh, 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 I do want to grab a session. I think I have a session on the charger. I do. All right. Cobbles are also charging. We'll bring those over. Uh, I will leave this on the workbench to remind myself. All right. So let's put the uh, GoPro session on the one that is... Uh, most reliable, which is the F40 Pro 2 rig at the moment. 
it is not falling out of the sky like the uh, F40 Pro 4 rig. So let's throw this on in here. Ah, shit, there's no memory card in there. Mm. Or is there? Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, where'd they all go? I mean, hey, there's one. Why is that in the computer? Uh, oh, it's the memory called memory. Bleh. It's the memory card. It's the uh, it's the memory card called fart. There it is, fart. It's called fart, guys. What the hell's on here? Oh, this is from Sunday. Look at that. Look at that mug. This, I think, is a big memory card. I can probably leave this. Um, it's a terrible idea to leave footage on here, but the, the, this was just like a random, a rando flying day uh, for Adam and I. Yeah, there's nothing really exciting. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm tempted to just delete these, because I know I'm not going to do anything with them. The, the, like, look at the sky. The, the, the sky had nothing going on. It was literally just like a get out and fly kind of day. Hey, who, ha, hey. Getting weird. We're getting weird. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna bail on these. Uh, the sky looked like shit, and I was flying like shit. I flew five different quads that day, so I was just like, I'm not gonna fly good, but I'm gonna try test tunes and uh, just kind of fart about. Uh, okay, so uh, that memory card's over here. Computer will get angry that I just yanked it. Yeah, there it is. Get in there. Uh, the better what I should have done is uh, form is format it in the GoPro, but I didn't. Although I could, I could do that if uh, if I were a smart person, but I won't, cause I'm not. I haven't had uh, I haven't had uh, a hard time with with GoPros in that though. Um, Caddx seems to really like you to uh, reformat and. Uh, I don't think I've had a problem with run cam either, but ugh. oh come on, what's happening here? I forgot my little pluggy. I forgot my little USB butt plug. And all right, our butts are plugged. I do not have eyes on the chat because the stream had a heart attack, but that's okay because I gotta just get this done. And then go. Poops. Okay. Um, okay. So we've got that in there. We've got this in here. I'm gonna pull the mic out a little bit so I can talk you guys through my bag for like five minutes, and then we gone. We going. We go into a place. We go into Asheville with all the other stoners. <laughs> uh, so let's get some stuff out so that we can put stuff in. Uh, these are a couple of my business cards. The true OGs uh, may or may not have one of my business cards. I, I kind of ran out a long time ago. Um, I've got the QX7 in here, and then uh, the little side po pocket here has just like relatively random weirdo kind of stuff. Extra AA batteries, um, uh, AA charger, extra Fat Shark battery, um, I'll do a better version of this, what's in my bag, at some point. Let me twist so you guys don't see my asshole. Um, and then, uh, so for my goggles, SMAs don't love being uh, unplugged and plugged a million times, so I leave them on. This, uh, this patch and setup is small enough to fit, and then what I do is I just, the, like the tiniest little bit, I just twist the, uh, I have one of the little TPU jib jabs on here. Just twist it a little bit, just so that this guy can rotate, and then leave it exactly there. And then I just kind of fold the battery up inside that, and then that makes a little package that is just small enough to fit alone in the little top pouch here. So I don't have to, like, zip and unzip the, the fat shark. Well, 
you can't fit it in the Fat Shark bag with with anything on it. Um, so this is uh, this is kind of a requirement for me for a bag to have a spot that I can just drop the goggles without using the uh, the Fat Shark bag because I don't want to spend the time unscrewing and screwing SMA every single time, and I also don't want to put the stress and the dirt into the SMA. Um, so yeah, that's my little setup there. It drops down in the bottom, which is really nice. Little tiny piece of Velcro to hold that down. Ethics prop bag, if you don't have one, get one. It's just a pencil bag, so maybe just get a pencil bag instead, um, or support ethics. This is an awesome bag, and it's it's just well made, and it says clockwise and counterclockwise, and then it's got a center section for uh, angry props. There's a big sad face on there that you guys can't really see. Um, it's just well made, and it's like seven dollars, so just go get it. Um, fits really nice there, and then a couple other. So these are these crazy 5552 props. They're not like I, I keep like regular, normal, like five inch and three inch props in here. Um, and then wacky props go in their in their own little bags. Uh, I also put wacky props up here in the in the laptop holder, but I'm actually gonna bring my laptop, so I have to empty this out. Ugh. Luckily, there's plenty of room here in this bag for for some extra props. So that is emptied out. I might as well grab no, I do want to load some more stuff onto the laptop, so I'll wait. Um, so 5552 is here for the long range rig. Um, these are Dow folding props. Uh, I'm actually gonna leave these here. Uh, these are the Hurricane 5147s. I'm also gonna leave these here. Um, uh, what are these? Uh, these are the three inch props that I run on the Acrobrat. These are T-Motor uh, 3140s. I love these props on heavier weight three inch rigs. So I'm gonna just sneak them in there. Uh, I've got a set of headphones in here, a uh, million, million extra straps up here on the, the flappy doodles. Um, here's my uh, broken prop crew. God damn it, I forgot to give away a broken prop crew uh, thing. Uh, I'll have to do it next week. Uh, here's my little uh, fart bags. Extra, um, extra uh, uh, microfiber just for the LOLs. This charger is done. I can take these batteries off. I already have one battery bag in there. Here comes my second one, which is right here. This is a real ACC or a real AC. I don't know what the hell they're called. Um, this is on, like seven dollars on Banggood, and it ships from their U.S. warehouse, so it doesn't take a fucking year to get here. And it's got those dividers. So in theory, if one battery goes, in theory, it's not gonna melt all the rest. Um, <laughs> now that I've seen one of these things go off in person, I have a feeling that it'll melt right the fuck through, but it's not gonna make it worse, right? Well, it might, because then there'll be burning plastic in there as well. So it might make it worse. Or, or maybe, 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 maybe. Might make it better. There we go. I said it. I said it. That goes in there. Uh, there's both my battery pouches. I have the bag set up for that. You guys can't see it, but just believe me. Um, and then I've got a million wacky things in here. Uh, I'll tell you about some other time. <laughs> uh, that should be... What's this? Uh, these are more normal props. Uh, no, I'm fine. I don't need those. Um, what's going on here? These are staying. Packing light on propellers. Uh, I'm assuming that we're not going to fly any like bandos or anything like that. Mm. Uh, Our district has a whole like, Yeah, that's truck. true. That's true. Uh, little tiny, uh, <laughs> little tiny, tiny whoop box with things in it. Uh, a whoop, some batteries, Insta360 Go. I wonder if I can fit this in my mouth. <laughs> I wonder if I can fit this somewhere in your ass. Thanks, chat. Uh, no. 
All right, so this I'll just throw into a, uh, a separate bag. I think I'm just gonna leave this here. And no need to close it because I gotta put the laptop in it. So, um, yeah. I should probably leave this here. Nah, whatever. Maybe I'll trouble, maybe I can spend some time troubleshooting it. Uh, extra lipo bag. This, that, the other. I got goggles, I got a transmitter, quads, props, batteries, um, sex toys. All right, so we're good. And this needs to go in a separate box because somehow this bag isn't big enough. Um, you know what I do want to bring though? I'm going to bring this, uh, uh, this is my Immersion RC power play. Well, in a in an apple sock, and I do want to bring this because I want to record. If I, I might not, yeah, I definitely won't record the international game of whoop video with the Insta 360 Go on it because I need to do snap rolls, um, and that that makes it like infinitely bottom heavy. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Um, I think that's all I really have to show you guys, and I think that I'm also kind of sort of packed. Uh, remember, Tiny Trainer, for sale. Uh, make me an offer I can't refuse. Five batteries, a whole shitload of extra TPU, I'll throw in a bunch of props, I might even throw in an extra set of motors, uh, Beta FPV 1404 motors. Uh, it's got Emacs 1404 6000s on it, uh, Runcam Phoenix Nano, all the good stuff. Um, well, now I can pull the chat back up, if I can find the window that it's in. Where is... I'll just go to YouTube. Dirt, 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 dirt. Hey, there it is. Um, okay, so you guys have been tagging me. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, scrolling down, I'm gonna rip through these tags, and then I'm at oh, it's 1251. Oh, this is. You guys get like 60 more seconds. Um, nah, fuck it. I'll get through the chat. I'm in it. Uh, Roscoe six says your eye gain looks way too high. I'm playing around with higher uh, eye gains, Roscoe, to to try to fix this um, this wobble that we keep getting uh, when we jump off the throttle. Uh, the eye gain, we can get away with with more eye gain because of some of the other things like um, uh, uh, like running lower feet forward or typically the reason not to go too high on eye gain is because it gives like a robotic kind of feel. Um, but running a, a very high set point transition and a very low feet forward um, softens it up enough where you can actually get away with higher eye gain. Um, long conversation about eye gain in the future, for sure. Um, Private Island, uh, will this quad fly? Can-Am frame, I don't know that frame, fits up to 5.5 inch props, 1407, 2800 4S, all up weight 240. Um, uh, I would say, what size pro what size props are you gonna run on? Uh, I can't ask you that question because I'm about to end it. Um, fourteen oh sevens are only really gonna spin a three inch prop. Twenty eight hundred kV on four S is not gonna work with a three inch prop. Um, I'm assuming you're going to spin a four or five inch prop on that. I would go to a much wider stator motor. I would go to like an X Nova 1804 or a Brother Hobby uh, 2004 or even a uh, FPV Cycle 22. Is it a 22? Yeah, 2203. I I would I would actually go towards one of these two. Screw the X Novas. Um, one of these two, Brother Hobby 2004 or FPV Cycle 2203. Uh, those 1407s are gonna get real hot, is my is, is my guess on that setup. Um, it'll fly, but those motors are gonna be very angry, uh, is my guess. Uh, scroll, 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 and... Uh, Griffin just got here. Well, he got here a while ago. Um, Griffin says it worked fine, but now when I plug a LiPo, it only gives me one tone and there's no power to the board, nothing lights up. Uh, so there should at least be three tones. You should get doo doo doop, and then you don't get the last two boop boop. If you're literally only getting doo, then the ESC is 
fucked. Um, try, uh, try updating or like reinstalling or whatever. Be all helly. Uh, if you're getting do do do, but then you're not getting the boop boop, the the last two of the five tones, um, that means that either the ESC is not sending power to the flight controller, or it means that the flight controller is getting power, but its regulator is blown up, and so you need to get the multimeter out and, and just start figuring out where what the hell, you know? Like, where's the... Where's the... Lost for words. CID FPV, LOL. Uh... Right. Is the comment that I just read that applies to right now? Uh, Roscoe's thinking about buying GoPro. I'm better off with Hero Seven or Eight. Eight. Um, remember, we don't get insurance here in Australia. Uh, there's supposedly no difference in durability between the Seven and the Eight, and the Eight is quite a bit better from what I've heard about uh, from lots of people that I trust. So go with the Eight, unless the Seven is really cheap. If you can get a Seven for like two hundred bucks, maybe get the Seven. Um, but the Seven will probably be three hundred, and the Eight will probably be four hundred. I, I, actually, you should wait because I'm sure a 9 is coming and then you can get the 8 for cheaper. But if you need something right now, I would actually do the 8. Um, I have a 7. When it breaks, I'm going to go up to the 8. I'm going to spend the extra money. Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. B-Man80 says, what, uh, what's a roundabout number you're thinking for that tiny trainer like a starting point? Uh, I would, uh, just totally off the top of my head, I would, I would guess 300. Because it's got extra batteries, it's going to have extra motors, um, it's got really good components, um, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming 300 but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if you're interested in it, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm done. It's 1 a.m. I'm shot. Uh, get. I don't want to kill you. I just want to flick you away so that you go away, flying ant. Because I'm allergic to you fucks. <laughs> now you're dead. Um, that's it for me. <laughs> 500 for the 8. Yeah, Roscoe, the 7 is great. The 8 is definitely better. Uh, can't go wrong with either one. The 7 is a phenomenal camera. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Thanks for hanging in, everybody. I have no idea how many of you there are because of the weirdness. Um, hopefully this is all in one big stream. Uh, it doesn't matter to you guys. Here's the goat. He's broken. <laughs> have a good night. You guys are awesome. I will see you maybe Friday or Saturday, but definitely Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time because I'm going to take Joshua Bardwell's um, time slot. So at the latest... I'll see you guys at 1 a.m. 1 p.m. Eastern Time next Sunday. Goodbye. Look, I got all the words right. Uh, let me send you guys out with something. Um, oh, this is a job for... Goodbye! <laughs> あきらめんなお前。どうしてそこで